In this video, we're looking at how a metal reacts with a non-metal to form an ionic compound. And the example we're taking is sodium reacting with chlorine. Now, first of all, you need to know about the electrons in the shells for both sodium and chlorine. Um, sodium is element number 11. That means it's got 11 protons. So the nucleus has a charge of 11 plus. And sodium <coughs> excuse me, has 17 protons, atomic number 17, so it has a charge of 17 plus on its nucleus. The number of protons for an atom is the same as the number of electrons. So Na, we've got 11 protons and 11 electrons. And the way they're arranged, you probably remember, you can have a maximum of two electrons in the first shell, a maximum of eight in the second shell, and that makes 10, so the 11th electron is in the third shell, quite a long way from the nucleus. By the way, I've drawn these, I've put these electrons in pairs in the second shell. It does make it easier and quicker to see that you've got a full outer shell. It's very quick to count, 2, 4, 6, 8, rather than having the electrons evenly spaced, and it just takes a bit longer to count them. And so it makes it easier for you to check you've got a full shell. It also makes the examiner, makes the job easier for the examiner. Now, to form a stable um, substance, the sodium has got to lose that one electron. If it loses that electron, that shell is now a non-existent. It's empty. It's, there's nothing there. So the previous shell is a full outer shell, and that makes the sodium stable. It will be now be a sodium ion. Now, what's happened to it? Well, if it's lost an electron, we are now making a sodium plus ion. Why is it positive? Well, we've still got 11 protons in the nucleus, but now we've only got 10 electrons. So overall, we've got one more proton than neutron, uh, electron, I beg your pardon, and that means we've got a charge of plus one. So, when sodium gains that charge of plus one, we can draw square brackets around it, and we'll write plus there. So what does that electron do? Well, that electron is going to join chlorine, and it's going to fit in the outer shell of chlorine. Chlorine has 17 electrons of its own, which means the outer shell has seven in it, it wants one more to get a full outer shell, and by gaining sodium's electron, it's now got that full outer shell. And there's something about full outer shells that makes a substance very stable. It makes, gives them the same electron arrangement as a noble gas. In the case of sodium, it's got the same arrangement as the noble gas neon. Chlorine, by gaining the electron, has now got the same uh, arrangement as the noble gas argon. So this has also been made stable. The change that has happened now is that chlorine, because it's gained an electron, because it's gained something negative, it has become negative. Chlorine started off with 17 protons and 17 electrons, which are negative. It's gained an electron, so now it has 17 protons and 18 electrons. Overall, it's got one more minus than it's got plus, so it's got a charge of minus one, which is why a chloride ion has a charge of minus one. So we'll write our charge there. And that is uh, a dot cross diagram to show the bonding when sodium reacts with chlorine. Incidentally, this is still called a sodium ion. When chlorine gains an electron, we don't call it a chlorine ion, we call it a chloride ion. And that's the same with all the non-metals when they gain electrons. Chlorine becomes chloride, uh, oxygen becomes oxide, sulfur would become sulfide, and so on. So when a negative ion is formed, the name of the element changes from chlorine, for example, to chloride. Now, in an exam situation, you won't want to draw every single electron in a, an atom of chlorine. So you can just focus on the outermost shells. In the case of sodium, then, we'll just draw a sodium atom. We'll put a ring around it, and we'll just give it one electron in its outer shell. And we'll draw a chlorine atom, and we'll just show its outer shell with 
seven electrons in. By the way, there's no rule that says metals are dots and non-metals are crosses. Just it's a good idea to show the electrons from the different atoms as different symbols. So sodium is going to give away its one electron to chlorine. And the end result is sodium has lost that electron. And because it's lost a minus charge, it's got more protons and electrons, so it's positively charged. Chlorine has gained that electron, so it's got its seven electrons it's had at the start, plus it's gained the dot, the other electron, and it's got a minus charge. So that's ionic bonding. That's all the detail you would need in a, an AS level or a GCSE exam, probably. Um, and it's, this is not the answer. This is like showing you're working. The answer is that. That is the ionic dot cross diagram for sodium chloride.